The House comes to questions for oral answer. Question number one. In the name of Materia Ture. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koutou te whare kutaku pātai ki te Minister for Women. When she said that she was, quote, fully equipped to kind of leap in and tackle, end quote, the challenge of pay equity, why is she ruling out a law change to shrink the pay gap in the private sector? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Can I start by wishing the member a happy International Women's Day? Uh, and to be clear, I'm not ruling out legislation. In fact, the government is drafting legislation to implement the principles of the Pay Equity Working Group as we speak. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When she said that, quote, businesses should do gender pay gap audits and publish the results, why will she not make that happen with a simple law change? Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Because I don't believe the government's the answer to everything, and I believe that uh, businesses that perhaps think they don't have a gender pay, um, or, uh, pay gap should look at doing an audit and publish that if that's what they believe. But I think that we can educate, we can show them ways that they can close that gap. Uh, we can actually lead the way in the public service, uh, which is what we did by publishing our own data last year by department, um, and that's what we stand for. Supplementary question, Materia Turei. Does uh, the Minister agree with the Human Resources Institute, the Chief Executive, who said that, quote, gender pay audits are absolutely the right thing for organisations to do, and if so, will she now adopt the Green Party's bill that will make that happen? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, to the first part of the question, um, yes I do, and I think that, um, that certainly, as I say, we've done it within the public service. I think what it did was really point to areas that needed improvement and we're now able to put those processes in place. Um, to the second one, well, that would be a decision for caucus that would go to them in due course. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turei. Given that the pay gender audits in the public sector have helped to close the gap by half a per cent this year, why won't she now make this change in the private sector so that all working women will benefit? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula uh, As I've stated already, because I don't think that at this stage legislation is the answer, I think that publishing the data yesterday for the first time in 14 years actually gets um, the right information out there that hasn't been, because I think a lot of people think that there isn't a gender pay gap, and this research proves that there actually is. Um, we have got ways that we can close it that are not legislative, and that is what we are pushing to do. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turei. Given the law requires that she is paid the same as her male colleagues, why will she not afford other New Zealand women that same legal protection from bias? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, we have the Equal Pay Act, and as such, as you know, they should not be discriminated by on gender. So it is the same for them as it is for us in Parliament, and that is what we expect of our businesses. True. Supplementary. Point of order, David Seymour. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek your guidance with respect to Speaker's ruling 18.1, uh, which refers to members wearing T-shirts, and in particular T-shirts with motifs on them, in the House, such as Materia Ture currently wears. Certainly I haven't had a good look at the attire <laughs> the members are wearing, but it is a requirement that uh, business attire is worn. I will watch it fairly carefully. From now on. <laughs> Not too carefully, Mr Speaker. <laughs> Supplementary, Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When the Minister knows that Māori women are paid 22 per cent less and Pacifica women 26 per cent less than men for the same work, why will she not act to help these women get fair pay? Well Mr. Speaker, Honourable well, Mr Speaker, we are acting, and that is the joint working group principles that are now being turned into legislation. Um, through that, though, we made an announcement about a week ago that we would actually be using those principles to work through uh, two other cases that are before us that actually do uh, affect particularly Māori and Pacifica women who are in low-paid work. Um, we are committed to seeing equity um, in that area. We have been working in good faith, and I have confidence actually that those negotiations will come to a conclusion at some stage. 
Supplementary question. Supplementary question. The right honourable Winston Peters. Uh, if, as the minister says, she's fully equipped to kind of leap in and and tackle. After nine years, exactly what has she done with the huge 47,000 public service disparity under her administration? And when will she stop blaming business and not set an example herself? Order, order. There's two questions well, Mr. there. Speaker. The Honourable, order, the Honourable Paula Bennett. Yeah, well, Mr Speaker, I'm actually really pleased um, to have that question from the member. So what we have done is increased the number of women in senior leadership roles within the public service. So that's now at that's now at 45 per cent. So there are now 45 per cent women in senior leadership roles within the public service. We have set up a diversity and senior leadership uh, promotional so that they know what the paths are and the career paths and how they can get those promotions. We've equally looked at uh, the number of C is higher under this government, female CEs, than it has been under any government ever, and that's something that we are committed to. We have equally transparently put out there the public service by department what their gender pay gap is. We have now done unbiased conscious order, training. Order. Point, point of order. The right I asked a specific question. It's a very long answer. The, the, the question required order. to be answered order. is... The member will resume his seat immediately. It wasn't a specific question, it was quite a long question, and it has been addressed. Further supplementary. So what's the pay gap then? So what's the pay Order. gap then? Order. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Now that she has said that pay equity is one of her main priorities, does that mean she will finally make an offer in the pay negotiations to the 50,000 women like Christine Bartlett, who are waiting for the government for fair pay. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Parliament. Actually, Mr Speaker, those negotiations are confidential and the member wouldn't know if, if an offer had been made or not. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Point of order. 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 Point of order, sir. Order. Point of order, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave for Jan Logie's Equal Pay Amendment Bill to be set down as Members' Order of the Day number 1 on the next Members' Day. I'll leave a sort for that course of action. Is there any objection? There is objection. Question number two, Maureen Pugh. Thank you.